Um, cool. Um, our time's up now, so um, I'll start uh, just quickly run through our, through our deck. Um, so by way of so by way of background, um, we we started originally um, as <clears throat> a solution for um, for alternative provision um, of long of kind of long term savings and uh, and pensions equivalent uh, savings product um, on chain. Um, what uh, we're working on right now, which represents a partial pivot, um, is um, but is a model that uh, it is essentially a user a user owned and user governed pool of cap, so effectively a DAO uh, that fulfills two main functions. One of them is uh, is issuance of credit to its members. I'll focus on that section uh, in this presentation, and I'll talk through the rest uh, after I'm done. So how do we approach the issue of uncollateralized loan issuance using um, uh, using a DAO framework and why, why that matters? So, so our use case was essentially uh, fairly straightforward. Um, we, want, we wanted to experiment with a solution that would provide uh, users with access uh, to credit and uh, high yield savings uh, without dependency on the banking system. Okay, let's let's move to the next slide. Cool. Um, so I'll uh, uh, retrace my steps. Sorry about that. So essentially, the uh, the focus of our approach was to ensure a uh, of uh, focus service to the members of the of uh, the DAO. Um, the DAO will have a legal personality that will be able to uh, to to legal own physical assets and enforce the legal rights. Uh, what we wanted to ensure is that we have um, a you know right balance of kind of simplicity, uh, simplicity, efficiency, and being able to iterate and upgrade um, in order to ensure. Um, there's credit issuance to the members as well as access to uh, to high yield uh, investment products um, through the DAO. Uh, right now, what we have um, uh, is uh, enabled under collateralized lending. Uh, we incentivize uh, L adopters using wooden curve mechanic, and uh, we're integrating fiat of non ramps, and of course. Um, the contributions into the treasury are immediately um, put into interest generating products um, from the DeFi space. Um, next slide, please. This is what a user sees when um, they, uh, when, it, when enter a pool, essentially, uh, there's an evolution of the pool size. Uh, access to my loans sections and my guarantees. So essentially what we're talking about here, what we're showing here rather, is um, in exactly the same way as rotating saving societies work, um, but here in a sort of on-chain, more programmatic fashion, a user can uh, request a loan um, or it can it can act as a co-signer of the loan, as a guarantor for other members, and have an increased participation um, in the interest rate income, obviously, from that. Next slide. Thanks. Yeah, we can skip through it. Next. Right, okay. Um, main issues behind uh, solving for this use case uh, are twofold. Uh, there's on-chain risk assessment, and a liquidity, a liquidity provision, liquidity management, rather, what we refer to as cash gap. As far as the on-chain risk assessment is concerned, uh, the most, uh, let's say, um, a straightforward way to uh, to tackle this is to is to enable staking 
through, uh, through the members um, based on one's off-chain reputation, which is what we've implemented in this version. However, what we also look at, um, and that's for the recent uh, I integrations with, uh, with off-chain credit score providers. Um, we're thinking through the implications of the trade-offs right now, but that will enable uh, much greater scalability um, what we want to make sure is that uh, the privacy trade-offs are appropriately uh, considered. As far as the the cash liquidity is concerned, uh, the cash gap or lack of liquidity is concerned, um, we designed the Dow Treasury to be uh, programmatically governed as a function of liquidity preference of its members. Um, the allocation uh, between let's say DeFi assets, um, let's say DeFi interest bearing assets that have immediate liquidity um, and um, off-chain assets that require a fixed term commitment. Uh, these are the inputs that, that ultimately define uh, the hack out applied um, to effectively use this net asset value when, when and if they wish to exit the pool. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, next slide. We've, I've, I've covered this already. Yeah, next. <laughs> we talked about this. I'm just mindful of the time. Cool. Um, that's a pretty straightforward slide, right? So, since we're talking about NCAF, obviously, uh, Constructed um, P token that we use um, that's abstracted from the user experience that um, serves to programmatically uh, provide uh, incentives um, in the following scenarios. A, a user joins the pool when liquidity is low and therefore um, is entitled to a higher proportion of the profit share of the pool. Um, user leaves the pool when liquidity is high. I usually can take a loan when liquidity is low and repay a loan when liquidity is high as a function of total amount of uh, funds or let's say AUM equivalent in quotation marks in the DAO. Uh, the shape of the curve is designed uh, to attract uh, as many early adopters um, as possible. Next slide, please. Great. Uh, loan issuance uh, is based on the community collateral model. Uh, this is current implementation. It's 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 currently being, um, let's say, revised slash uh, debated finally with our uh, uh, kind of support group and group of advisors. And very welcome to hear more views around that. Uh, if anybody wants to discuss it, just feel free to ping the team, myself or Yana. Um, the current implementation um, is uh, mimics the way existing community banks and rotating societies work uh, insofar as borrower uh, um, has to provide at least a portion of the collateral, in our case 50%. However, the existing, uh, the existing DAO members um, have to effectively what is in mid space called co signing the loan, right? So they have to vouch for this member, which is reflected in staking, and um, it obviously entitles them to uh, the interest rate income from that loan. Um, it's an established market practice, it does have its own challenges uh, in a pure on chain implementation in the internet space simply because we don't, unless every DAO members uh, are known to each other, either very well or vaguely, um, in the absence of really robust solution for reputation, um, this approach um, can work for, it can certainly work within the Dunbar number limitations, it can certainly work for small for small DAOs where the memberships, uh, membership are, is active and, and people know each other reasonably well. It does have a natural ceiling to scalability and uh, hence uh, I mentioned earlier that we're looking at uh, centralized 
uh, centralized um, providers um, of credit data. Of, uh, we can talk about it later. Next slide, please. Um, here you see a snapshot um, of a pool, essentially, uh, members propose um, to either support a loan uh, or they ask for a loan. Um, it, yeah, further self-explanatory slide. How do we approach interest rate sharing and uh, APR calculation? So, um, fairly straightforward approach. A borrower sets up an APR, he or she is willing to provide um, for the loan. Um, that's resolved through either acceptance or rejection of the proposal. Um, it can also be handled as an auction. Pool receives 50% of APR provided by the borrower and, re and redistributed between the members uh, immediately. Um, we incentivize uh, uh, voting through uh, the economics of the interest rate distribution. Um, if the borrower doesn't pay the, the loan back, the pool token stakes the loan are effectively slashed. So from that perspective, from the perspective of the pool, uh, it is a fully collateralized loan. From the perspective of the borrower, it's an undercollateralized loan. Um, as I mentioned before, um, risk assessment and um, in enforcement is something that we are still thinking through. Uh, are there better solutions? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, we'll be working with a closed beta group uh, to, uh, to test them and see how we can strike the balance between simplicity and um, effectiveness. Next step, please. Cool. Um, breaking free from DAO's existing models, the problems versus um, macro solution. Um, we're mindful, obviously, um, you know, observing what's happening in the, in the ecosystem. We're mindful of the fact that members might disagree with decisions made by the DAO, might not be able to leave it. Um, so rage quit. Um, not to be um, is important, right? So it's it's important to be able to leave, take away your available balance. Clearly, as a function of how the treasury of the DAO is allocated, uh, that balance uh, will not necessarily be immediately available. If the treasury is fully allocated into uh, uh, DeFi interest-bearing products, then yes, um, there will be a maximum available balance that one can walk away with. If, however, uh, the treasury is allocated into a combination of, um, of you know, of DeFi products and opt-in products, which is what we're working on, then the term profile um, and liquidity profile are going to be different. Uh, it will be more restrictive. But, you know, frankly, if you can lock your money for a few weeks or months and get um, a much more attractive interest rate with a lower level of risk. Um, a lot of people would do that. So, whilst we have enabled rage quit, we also want to make sure that we give our users as much information as possible. And uh, to this end, what um, we show at any moment in time is um, any. Uh, heck, so basically their cost of exit at any moment in time. That's calculated programmatically. Um, if a user wants to leave the DAO and the borrower has not yet repaid the outstanding loan, your stake stays in the DAO until the loan is repaid. Uh, we're still iterating on those incentives. We're still iterating on how we can make um, the pool more efficient and more resilient. Um, so that will be out in our further updates, and that's something that we're discussing with um, our beta testers and our, and our advisors right now. Uh, next slide. Cool. Potential edge cases. A learning pool has several edge cases at the moment when enrollment participants may be, may be at a disadvantage. 
right? We have already seen over the last two weeks that um, a more complex a DeFi product is, um, a more potentially ruinous the, the, the consequences of um, either an executed attack um, uh, or an exploit can be. Uh, we've identified two edge cases um, that we're currently um, uh, are pondering on. Number one, let's suppose that we have Reminder for those that just joined, uh, our P-token price is defined by the shape of the bonding curve at any moment in time. If they all live uh, at the same time, P-token price will essentially dump leaving other pool members at a substantial disadvantage. Why? You've got low liquidity, you've got low price. Uh, the solution would be to add withdrawal limits in order to maintain um, a pool in a relative state of balance, as well as deposit limits. For example, to increase the chance of a couple of whales influencing the pool excessively. That is not dissimilar to actually what uh, is historically provided by the regulator in, sec in the security space. Um, for us, it was a you know a natural approach that would ensure that that the pool cannot be uh, uh, cannot be easily gamed and to preempt uh, a fast set of attack vectors. Another case is connected with staking. So when a pool member stakes for a loan application, he or she in fact takes a part of liquidity, uh, which which programmatically lowers the P token price. Um, of the bonding curve. This design ensures that all P tokens are always backed by DAI, otherwise the pool may not have enough money for mass withdrawals. Uh, this case will be resolved at the UI level and obviously there will be some off-chain involvement. Uh, we're thinking through how to address it uh, programmatically and we have a couple of ideas as well. So uh, you know, again, uh, it, if anybody wants to delve delve into the edge cases and attack vectors. Super happy to have the chat and uh, get input. We're discussing it internally right now. Uh, next slide, please. That's pretty much all. Cool. So I think that's the last one. Thanks for help, Yana.